Narrative writing features refers to the sentences within stories that help make the story come alive. They're all about character reflections, character actions, describing the setting, and many others. In this activity, we're going to take a look at how we can utilize children's books to help our students better understand how to add elaborations or narrative writing features to their own stories so that we get away from all the action, action, action that students like to write when they tell stories. So this activity begins with actually first just reading a great children's book. And in this case, we have one of our favorites here at Writing with Design. It's called Little P. And uh, and in this story, uh, we'll we'll hear about uh, an experience of a little P uh, and, and then be able to take a couple pages from this story and come back and add elaboration sentences to make the story come more alive. So the steps are all laid out for you here, but we're going to dive right in to, uh, to first hear the story and then go through um, this activity. So these are just a couple of examples of what it looks like. So you can see here that it's just pages from the story. And then there are these bubbles with questions around them. And all of these resources are in here for you. So you can replicate this not only with this story, but for any other that you decide to read. So basically what we do is we decide on the, the elaboration questions that we want students to answer, and we work on getting responses for that. So you can see within these, there are sentences in each of the bubbles. And then the numbers are just indicating that when we reread the story, this is the order in which we will read them so that we pull in the text from the original along with the elaborations that we added in. So these resources right here are just showing you all the questions that you have to pull from. So you can ask the same one over and over on the different pages that you work on from a story, or you can rotate. Just know that these are all your choices. These are our emerging resources. So they are the most accessible resource for students. Uh, and you can see there's three categories of character descriptions, character reflections, and setting descriptions, and then lots of questions within each of those sections. And these are for first person or personal uh, stories that students are going to tell. So something that happened to them or something that they can relate to and write from the I perspective. Then uh, this is also for first person, um, but for the developing level, and this just means it's a little bit more advanced. There's a few more choices here. So this can be for older students, as well as just when students get comfortable with that emerging resource, that's when we like to, uh, to bring them into the, onto the developing one. So you can see here, uh, there are a lot more here. We bring in dialogue and monologue, which is a new one, uh, and, uh, and several questions in there for you to pull from. So let's dive into the story here. Little P by Amy Krause Rosenthal. This is the story of Little P, Mama P, and Papa P. Little P was a happy little guy. He liked to do a lot of things. He liked rolling down hills, for example, super fast. He liked hanging out with his pee pals. He liked it when Papa P came home at the end of the day. Papa P would fling little P off the spoon high into the air and little P would scream again, again. At bedtime, little P very much liked snuggling with Mama P and hearing stories about what Mama P was like when she was a little P. But there was one thing that little P did not like. Any guesses? Candy, that's what you have to eat for dinner every night when you're a pea. Candy, candy, candy. Look at that poor guy. Monday, red candy. Tuesday, orange candy. Wednesday, yellow candy. Thursday, purple and pink polka dotted candy. Friday, striped candy. Saturday, swirly candy. Sunday, rainbow candy. Little P hated all of it. If you want to grow up to be a big, strong pea, you have to eat your candy. Papa P would say, if you don't finish your candy, then you can't have dessert, Mama P would say. How many pieces do I have to eat? Eat five pieces and you can have dessert. Five pieces, he whined. Five pieces, they chimed. We'll skip this page for now. We'll come back to this when we talk it through. One, yuck. Two, blech. Three, Four, blech. five pieces of candy. Now, can I have dessert? Yes, now you can have dessert, said Mama P and Papa P. Little P couldn't wait to see what it was. Spinach, squealed Little P, my favorite. 
We'll come back to this page. Little P licked his dessert plate clean. Yum, yum, extra yum. And they lived happily ever after. So a darling story with a really fun little message. And what we want to do, though, is help students go back and press pause on some of the pages of the text. Uh, because what children's books have that our students don't always have when they write stories is illustrations, right? They don't get to have drawings that go along with each sentence or every few sentences of their writing. And that's where a lot of the details happen is in the illustration. There's a lot more that goes on there than sometimes there is in the text. And what we want to show students is that when they write stories and the way that that stories get written that, that are not in picture book form is that the details have to come through the sentences. So we teach students that it's like pressing the pause button on the remote, that we want to freeze that moment of the story and we want to elaborate. So I'm going to go back to the page, the first elaboration, and you can see the little picture of the remote at the top here. We've got the play button, we've got the rewind, we've got the fast forward, uh, and then the, the pause right there with the play button. And so that's really what we're doing is we're play, then we pause, and we play, and then we pause, right? And we're pausing on specific pages of a text that we, that we then want students to tell more about, to elaborate. And so that's where we've stopped here, and we've asked the questions, what did little P do. So right in this moment, when his parents tell him he has to eat five pieces and he whines about having to eat five pieces, what does he do? So we can look at the picture here and we can pull out some more details. We also ask, what did little P smell, right? Like we can put ourselves there and think about like if something's gross and we don't want to eat it, what are some of the ways that that might make us feel or what, what could that smell like? So we're going to put ourselves into um, little P's uh, shoes here. And then lastly, what did little P think? He thought to himself, yuck, right? I am not sure if I'm going to do this. So we want to get students into the mind of little P. What was he thinking in that moment? So what did little P do? What did he smell? What did he think? And then you can see the responses there. So what did little P do? He frowned and his eyes drooped as he stared at his plate. What did little P smell? How the gross smell of cherry flavored candy made him feel sick. And what did he think? He thought to himself, yuck, I am not sure I can do this. And then we play around with the order. And so the one, two, three, four is just showing how when we read this story again, we're going to stop here and read it in this particular order. And this is something you'll just want to try out with students and try different orders. Sometimes some of the bubbles will work better first, and then you bring in the text from the original story. So if we scroll down to the next page where we did this, Fast forward down here to spinach when he gets to eat it. Uh, and I did not do this the first read through, but it's really nice to pause at this page and say, anybody have any guesses about what you think little P is going to get for dessert? And it's neat to see if students can switch the thinking. Like if he had candy for dinner, then what might he have for dessert? Right? Can they switch their thinking where it's kind of the reverse of what human people, right? human beings, human children eat for dinner? So here uh, you can see we've got, what did he do? What did he see? What did he think? So a couple of the same, the C is different than the smell from the one before. And uh, and then our great elaborations here. So what did little P do? He jumped up and down like a powerful pogo stick. What did little P see? A red bowl full of juicy green leaves was given to him. What did little P think? This is going to be delicious. I'm going to eat the whole bowl, he thought in his pea brain. And then you see the numbers again as well. But in this case, we're starting with what did little P see? So the red bowl that was put down in front of him. Then we're going to bring in the text, spinach, squealed little P, my favorite. Then we go to the do, and then we go to the thing. So we're going to reread the story here. And when we get to these pages, we'll add in these elaborations uh, so that you can hear just what it does to the story. It's really quite magical for students to hear their additions to a story get added in when you read it. Uh, and when I've worked with students on this, we've also tag teamed. So um, students will get assigned different bubbles and they will chime in when it's their turn to read their particular sentence. And it just gives such a sense of ownership and pride in the sense that they are adding to a published book and what they add sounds so magnificent that they think, gosh, I can do this. I can add this in uh, when I write my own stories.
So let's rewind and go back to the beginning of the story. What I am going to do is actually skip through this first little part. It's adorable story. But when we think about where is the sequence of events, where does the actual um, story take place? It actually is past all of this right here is informational, right? And that's kind of an interesting thing about children's books is that they can merge between genres, even though it's it is uh, fictional, it is informational about little P in the sense that it's just telling you he was a happy guy. This is what he likes to do. 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 But the actual story where there's a sequence of events starts right here when we learn that he does not like candy. That's what you have to eat for dinner every night when you're a P. Candy, candy, candy. Monday, red candy, Tuesday, orange candy, Wednesday, yellow candy, Thursday, purple and pink polka dotted candy, Friday, striped candy, Saturday, swirly candy, Sunday, rainbow candy. Little P hated all of it. If you want to grow up to be a big, strong P, you have to eat your candy, Papa P would say. If you don't finish your candy, then you can't have dessert, Mama P would say. How many pieces do I have to eat? Eat five pieces and you can have dessert. Five pieces, he whined. Five pieces, they chimed. He frowned and his eyes drooped as he stared at his plate. The gross smell of cherry-flavored candy made Little P feel sick. He thought to himself, yuck, I am not sure I can do this. One, yuck. Two, blech. Three, blech. Four, blech. Five pieces of candy. Now can I have dessert? Yes, now you can have dessert, said Mama P and Papa P. Little P couldn't wait to see what it was. Oh, I almost messed up there. Uh, a red bowl full of juicy green leaves was given to him. Spinach, squealed Little P, my favorite. He jumped up and down like a powerful pogo stick. This is going to be delicious. I am going to eat the whole bowl, he thought in his pea brain. Little P licked his dessert plate clean. Yum, yum extra yum. And they lived happily ever after. So see, isn't that incredible? When we pause, we add those elaborations in, we just answer those very simple questions that you have on these resources here. They add so much to a, a, a moment of time. And this is exactly what we want students to do when they write narratives. It's not action, 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 action. And then I went to bed the end. It has to be action, pause, elaborate. So let children think about what happened first, what happened second, what happened third. That's generally what we keep is about three moments of time in our narratives. And then we say, how can you elaborate? Okay. What's interesting about the way you look? How did you feel? What did you do? And let them answer these elaboration questions. Uh, and it will absolutely transform their stories. Happy writing.